Hey guys, alone here. Off meta heroes are overpowered. Not in the way of balance, but due to other reasons that I will go over in this video. So I'm a person myself that mains Symmetra, but also play other characters when the teams need it. My current win rate on Symmetra on my main account is around 60%, which is quite high. My rank is mid diamonds. My alt account, which is around the same rank, has a 64% win rate as Symmetra, but with about 25 games played, so it's not as accurate. Due to me playing a lot of Symmetra, I have a lot of people on my friends list who also mains Symmetra and some of them are even in high masters. Now what's interesting to me is that even though they're playing a really off meta hero on attack, defense, capture the points or anything like that, almost all of them have a win rate of about 60% or even higher than that or close to it. And then every time I look at the people on my friends list who are not playing off meta heroes and are maining for example Soldier, Genji or Farah, they don't really have that amazing win rates. I mean, they have positive win rates most of the time if they're in Masters. They have maybe 52%, 53%, or even maybe 55 in the higher amounts. But they never really have 60% unless they're like Tracer mains who are absolutely amazing and they're usually Smurfs. And yes, of course, this is only from my experience. I could be wrong, but from my experience playing a lot of off-meta heroes and then at the same time having a lot of off-meta hero friends on my friends list, I actually want to talk about why I think off-meta heroes are absolutely amazing in a lot of situations and why it can be easier to climb with an off-meta hero, even if you're not great with the hero compared to meta heroes. So overall, when you play Overwatch, the amount of games you face a Soldier or Genji compared to how many games you face an attack Torbjorn is obviously way higher and due to to that you know what to do when you get crushed by it. If you're facing a smurf Genji, you know that you need to pick Winston to counter that. It's almost a no-brainer due to how many times it's probably happened to you. But what about if you face a really good Torbjorn or just an attack Torbjorn overall? Sure, you could pick Farah and try to kill his turret and then him, but what if the enemy Reinhardt is defending the turret? Then what? As someone who is experienced playing off meta heroes, I know that Junkrat is amazing versus Torb and Reinhardt combo, as he can just destroy the Reinhardt shield and then quickly go for the turret. So why Farah isn't that great versus that combo, even though it might look like it, and maybe your team is telling you, oh, we need a Farah. The reason is, the turret is going to shoot you and the Rhine is going to be blocking your shots. It's really hard for you to peek around corners and actually shoot the turret when the Reinhardt is blocking, the shield is going to recharge faster than your shots can actually go through. At the same time your team might have a soldier on the team that's going to be shooting the Farah, and it's going to be really hard for the Farah to do anything but if you have a Junkrat just shooting above the ledges for example and just landing straight onto the shield he's not really in danger of being killed and he's also doing work. But honestly, most people around Diamond is not really considering that and they just ram their head against me as Farah, and they never really win with that. I call these heroes overpowered due to the fact that they need a coordinated team to take down. You can't really jump in one by one trying to kill a Torbjorn with his turret being defended by a Reinhardt. You need the entire enemy team to push in on him and that's why he's never really seen in esports for example. All the esports team are very organized and they're just going to crush that Torbjorn instantly. But when you play solo queue, people are not that coordinated unless you get to maybe Grandmaster and there are Torbjorn and Symmetra mains in top 500 or Grandmaster. So it does work there as well, but overall just in the solo queue manners, that's why they're so overpowered in my eyes. They do require a fully coordinated team and 60% of the time, in my experience, you do not face that and that's why you have such a good win rate usually on these characters. Also, the surprise factor is a huge thing. No one really expects a Symmetra or Torbjorn on attack and usually due to that, there's no way you're going to be countered already when you walk out of the spawn doors, which usually makes the first point fairly easy to capture. After that, Torbjorn can easily snowball with a turret and Reinhardt on the payload. And same with Symmetra who can just place a shield generator or teleporter in a good spot. And I also do know that there's a bunch of YouTubers talking about how you gain more SR playing off meta heroes a lot due to less people playing them. And if you're above the average of the player that rarely plays the heroes, then you will climb faster. I'm sure all of that helps, but the people who really, really climb fast are those people on my friends list, for example, or me myself, who has a very high win rate as those characters. If you learn how to play an off meta hero really well, you're going to, in my eyes, be a super effective player as nothing you do will be expected by the enemy team. Everyone knows that Soldier wants high ground and people will try to get him off it. Everyone knows that Genji goes for the healers and the Winston can just defend them. But what if you're facing a Symmetra that flanks the healers constantly and destroy them and you as Winston go for that Symmetra and then get lured into a room filled with turrets? 
Make use of the kit that these off meta heroes have because most people disregard it and loses due to it as they have a very slim amount of experience against these heroes in strange situations such as Torb on attack or Sumetra. Or even just on maps they're not really expecting a Sumetra, for example on Gibraltar which she's actually amazing at but people never really play her there but when I do play her there I actually win almost all of the time. Meanwhile, I honestly do think that these heroes are quite overpowered in solo queue, you cannot one-trick them. These heroes can also be the worst heroes in the game if you're facing a team that does know how to counter you or facing for example a full pre-made team in higher ranks. You need to understand when to swap these heroes and the times you can play these heroes. It pretty much always comes down to how coordinated your team is compared to the enemy team. If you know when to swap and when to stick on these heroes, your win rates will go up a ton. And that's actually all I wanted to say in this video. I do hope you guys did enjoy it and if you did, please let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video guys. Take care and have fun in Overwatch.